kusoma mon chapelle ilikuwa ni ndoto yangu kubwa sana nilishi kutamani kusoma boarding Nilienda nilienda hospital nikapima nilijikuta na mimba nilichanganyikiwa ilikuwa ilikuwa pigo kubwa sana kwangu kwa sababu niliona ni kama ndoto yangu inafifia I was born um, in Payuel, South Sudanese by nationality. I was taken by my brothers to Kenya, saying, uh, if you remain here alone, it's going to be very hard for you to survive. I left Kenya and came to Uganda, where one of my brothers was staying. But in 2013, I was forced to flee to again become a refugee. So I arrived in Canada on the 17th of December, 2020. I moved to Malaysia in 2014 together with my family due to religious victimization, persecution, and hatred. And during those particular nine years, there were so much of ups and downs. There were um, some horrible moments. There was trauma and stress. Living in all this crisis for nine years, we thought that our life is just going to be like this, always being fearful, always in the constant state of struggle. <laughs> 2020 hivyo January the 22 Ilikuwa kitu kama at 8 hivi Tunakaa kuwatch ah. Mtu tu akaingia kwa nyumba akatwambia laleni chini laleni chini kila mtu alete simu yake hapa Mimi nilikuwa na mtoto wangu nikamshika hivi nikamlalia hivi juu jirani yetu hapo nyuma alikuwa anafungua mlango ile ya kuja aone ni nini naendelea risasi ikafiatuliwa kwake lakini bahati yake mzuri haikumgusa Usiku huo ilikuwa usiku mgumu sana. Ilikuwa scary sana. It definitely is a very strong part of your life. Something you can't erase even if you want to erase it as well. But it's just that from day to day support or you engage yourself in so much of tasks that you don't get to think about it a lot. But again, when you go back to your bed or you have that moment of reflection or when you see something so exciting in life or something so sad in life, the whole story rewinds itself again. There are some memories you cannot delete from, from yourself. You become aware of what is the effect of all these memories. But then given my scenario of trying to do school, you need to be stress-free in order to do some of the assignments that are usually very hard. So I think there are many coping mechanisms but three are really key. Friends, family, and being outspoken. When it rewinds, you feel miserable, you feel helpless. You feel that um, there's no one who could actually care for you. And I kept finding refuge in my family or people who have been my mentors throughout my journey. They kept me strong. They kept me going throughout this phase. We are resilient given our past experiences, but still in Canada, there's so much isolation. You are a sponsored student, you are an immigrant, you come here, you are living alone. Uh, it's usually very depressing. And uh, I think that has been a very big challenge to most of the youth that I've been in contact with. It's very hard for them to, to be speaking out openly. Na hiyo uoga hadi leo hii, mi hata niko hapa kwa ungu. Lakini mda mungine usiku suwezi lala. Pusi ikigonga kwa bati hivi, hiyo usiku yangu inaribika. Paka asumbi nitakaa niko macho. I learned about mental health in Canada, and most of my colleagues as well. Because this is a topic that is usually spoken by the media, and uh, the community is aware about it. But then, as people who come from refugee setting, from our given background, like a South Sudanese like me, this is not something that we're used to. It's very hard to talk openly about mental health. <laughs> Vitu vile kataka kichwa, nafungua TV yangu, naweka music ikini bamba na simama ni dance. Ikini boesha ile ya huzuni huzuni, ya shed tears. Au muda mungine, naingia po kwa bed yangu, na lala the whole day kwanzi ya subuya dijioni suwezi kumbuka hata kuenda shule. Na muda mungine na jipea hope. Mimi ni mama sasa, nikikata tamasa hizi, what will happen kwa watoto wangu hawa wili? Sometimes when you have gone through so much trauma in your life, 
you need these kind of supports as a compulsory thing to your journey maybe i did not reach out to somebody but someone also did not reach out to me saying that hey girl you need some support right now uh, let me hear you out it's a crisis currently i'm worried about it but then uh, we we try as much as possible to be there for each other